here and I'm going to help facilitate today's Q&A. Um, we have some questions that were submitted before the event, which we can start with, but if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, just let us know. Um, really quickly, before we dive in, for those of you who are new to UNOVA, I wanted to let you know a little bit more about us. So the UNOVA Center is an acupuncture and Chinese medicine clinic based in New York City. We specialize in fertility and reproductive care, but we treat a wide range of concerns. Um, as of recently, we've moved part of our practice online and have been offering virtual consultations to support our patients and community, but we've also reopened all of our clinical doors and are available for in-clinic acupuncture and massage as well. Today, um, discussing work-life balance and answering all of your questions, we have UNOVA practitioners, Dr. Kelsey Tangle and Sue Jung Lee. Um, and with that, I will pass it over to them to introduce themselves and we can get started. Sure, I'll, uh, I'll introduce myself first. I am uh, Kelsey Tangle and I'm an acupuncturist and herbalist here at the Innova Center. As Emma was saying, I do specialize in women's health and fertility, um, but I also treat a lot of chronic pain and integrative pain management, as well as helping very stressed out New Yorkers and now people all over the country help to manage their stress, especially during this time of COVID. Um, and during our elections, where it just kind of seems like it's gonna be really hard to find balance and find joy in your life. Um, so we are here to help patients both virtually and in person. Um, my name is Sue Jung. Um, you guys can call me Sue. I am an acupuncturist and herbalist as well and have just joined the UNOVA team and I'm so excited to be here. Um, my background is in art and um, meditation is my other love besides Chinese medicine and um, essentially on this topic, I think the thing that most of us deal with is trying to, um, kind of reimagine our lives and live the healthiest version and find ways to manage or get rid of stress. And so we can talk a little bit about that today. Yeah. When, uh, Sue Doug and I were talking prior to this, this live event, um, kind of like what does work-life balance mean to us and really recognizing that, um, you know, it, it looks different for everyone and there is no perfect schedule and complete balance doesn't necessarily mean that it's half work and it's half life and also what is life? How do we balance the many components of that as well? Um, so one of the topics that we kind of realized that we were coming back to over and over again was uh, what are our non-negotiables in regard to a work-life balance? Um, and I, I can talk a little bit about, you know, what are my non-negotiables and the things that even when, when work is, you know, really hectic or life seems really hectic, because um, both can be, both can be, um, you know, lift you up and also both can be draining at times. Um, but really the non-negotiables that it came down to for me were, um, I'll never compromise on sleep, I really am someone who, who needs that seven to nine hours every single night. And that's, it's not an area that I can compromise on. Even when I was a graduate student, I never let myself miss out on sleep. Um, making sure that I'm eating foods that are nourishing for myself, whether it's me cooking it or making sure that I'm getting um, quality prepared meals. Um, and then the other thing that is really a non-negotiable for me is to have quality alone time with my husband. Um, if I don't have that, my happiness is really going to drop very quickly. Um, and kind of on that idea as well is, you know, having a, having a home is important to me. Um, I don't necessarily need all my clothes to be hung up in the closet, but I do need to have somewhere that is comfortable and feel safe for me in a place where I can um, really recharge. And we were, as we were talking about these non-negotiables, we realized it's really not that many things. <laughs> um, but those are really, those, when those, those need to be in place for me to feel like I'm able to live a fulfilling life and I'm able to show up at work being my best practitioner and I'm able to show up in life feeling like a complete person. Um, and I know, Sue, you were talking about some of your, some of your non-negotiables as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that's so important to remember that um, it's really our individual responsibility to show up the best version of ourselves. So by defining some of these things that you consider non-negotiables, for me, it's twice a day meditation and making sure that I eat a meal because I'm not so good at when I get in the zone, I forget to eat. And, um, 
and then my blood sugar drops and then I'm, uh, I'm hangry or whatever people <laughs> call it. And it's not good for your brain. So um, yeah, my non-negotiables, and I did this as an exercise because we were talking about how we might structure this in calendar form. I've always been a handwritten calendar person, but actually looking at it, I did this last night for this talk specifically. I put it on iCal or whatever version you want to use. But when you actually block out those things in your calendar, it felt like I was confirming that I was definitely doing those things. And they're called non-negotiables because I, I consider them non-negotiable, but they're obviously like they can move 30 minutes up or 30 minutes down. You have to be flexible and adapt to whatever is happening, but they're non-negotiable, meaning they have to happen that day for your, you know, happiness, wellness, whatever. So yeah, meditation twice a day and, and food. And so when I looked at it, it made me so happy to know that I was committing to them in little red blocks. So you just have to come up with what you consider your non-negotiables and that helps frame the, the week. And Sue and I were, were are similar in our, in our love for um, lists. Um, <laughs> I've taken mine a little into the digital age um, and I use the note section on my iPhone all the time. Um, I pretty much always have a note, a note section going and I try my best to, um, you know, put priorities to these notes that I have, you know, having what are, what are the most urgent things that I need to get to like first thing in the morning? Um, and then what are things that, um, aren't as urgent and maybe are more like treats for me as well. Kind of that idea of, you know, you're committing to your non-negotiables, but also in the list of things you need to do during the day. Sometimes, you know, you're, you're focusing and you're doing work and you feel like you need that little bit of a mental break, but there, there are ways to fill that mental break with things that are still productive and helping you um, further find more balance in your life. And, and things that that usually um, fills for me are when I'm like, uh, when I'm planning for like a vacation. And I know I need, I know I need like a half an hour mental break. I'll use that half an hour to research restaurants um, for my future vacation. Or maybe I need to buy a birthday present for my brother in two weeks. And I'll use that mental break as an opportunity to kind of do a little of the life admin work, but the life admin work that feels fun to me. Um, and that's a way that kind of helps, helps keeps me structured throughout the day, keeps me on task. It doesn't let things in my life fall out of balance, um, but it, it keeps me feeling, feeling productive. Um, so I find, I find that to be very helpful. I know, Sue, you said you have little treats that you like to add into your list throughout the day as well. So I still am working on this list, but ideally you take some dedicated time on a day that is less stressful, like a Sunday. And, you know, whether it's like morning pages time or whatever time that you're giving yourself, that's just your you know, intention and, and attention is there. And um, make a list of your dream, your favorite things that if someone were to come and serve you something in the middle of your day would just brighten your day. And I know that when I'm in that tunnel vision of work, I can't even think of that list. So it's helpful for me to have thought about it ahead of time. And then that way I can plan and be like, you know what, I actually will eat dried fruit if it's there for me. I just don't always have it. And that's a healthy, you know, because if you, if you wait till you're hungry or, you for, or you're just kind of at your wit's end and just need a break, you'll kind of default to your old habits. And sometimes those habits are less healthy or just, just not thought out or thoughtful. So in, in an effort to become better during this age of like, you know, a lot more fluid fluidity because we're doing a lot of work at home and it's hard to create that definitive balance. We have to put in that extra effort, you know, even thinking of treats is hard, you know? So if you, if you give yourself that time, it's a fun activity. And then that way you have that and you can go from like dream treat to like everyday little treat, you know? And, um, yeah, I mean we're it's a it's a it's a work in progress, guys. This is not something that's ever like we got it check. Um, but I love talking about this with Kelsey because she's so organized, and it, it helped me to really like think like, oh, I'm inspired. I'm gonna try to do this digitally because I can see some benefit in just seeing a week or a month on on a digital calendar because I tend to be very um, 
non-digital. I like to be handwritten and I like to spend as much time away from my phone and but I liked one of the things you said, um, Sue, and kind of why you really like doing these lists. And I think this is why I like doing um, some lists as well, is it also gives you that sense of accomplishment. You know, when you get to like kind of check off that task that you had, whether it be work related or more life admin related. Um, and really kind of one of the things that can make you feel out of balance in a work life setting is when things from work start to pull over and spill over into your life. Like when you're, you know, still answering emails and it's nine o'clock at night, so you're doing it on your couch when really you could be a lot more present with your significant other or just more present in leisure time and letting your body relax. Um, and I know that that can also happen in life things as well. You know, if you, if you leave things to the last minute and you're trying to, you know, last minute search for that present because you're going to go see your brother the next day and it's his birthday. So really trying to get those, trying to complete certain tasks. Um, I, I read a lot of um, Tim Ferriss's work and I like his podcast a lot. And he, while well, he takes everything like to such an extreme that I, 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 that's just, I'm a little, I might be, I like to like be organized, but I have more fluidity in my life than Tim Ferriss might. Um, but he's really someone who, who believes in kind of, you know, separating work and separating life. And while I might not ever really be able to do that because I've, I've chosen a career that is a passion career. And I often feel like the way that I live my life um, completely affects the way that I'm a practitioner as well. And, you know, using my time to enrich my soul affects the way that I'm a practitioner. And I'm kind of lazy in my personal life. I'm not as good as a practitioner. So I don't know if you agree with that. You can't like, you know, <laughs> be eating junk food on your couch and then go heal people um, an hour yeah. later. It doesn't think, work that way. I think that that's true in any career path. It's like you're, the integrity you have with yourself. You know that going in, whether it's conscious or unconscious. And so not to say that you have to like aim for perfection, but what we were talking about is the closest thing to perfection in the relative world is balance. And so that's yeah. what we're trying to achieve. And um, I think it's often hardest for us in professions that we are driven by, by heart and giving. Um, it's even more important for us to like have those boundaries and transition points and stuff. So because we're so, our tendency is to give. And if we overgive, it's not only an imbalance of nature, but it's also taxing and not sustainable, right? And I remember in the beginning of COVID when Unova really moved fully virtual. Um, and it was, it was such a shift because um, as a practitioner, most of the time when I'm really on, I'm very on with patients and my job is very physical and I'm in a physical space. I'm in a physical office and I'm physical with my hands. And when that all moved virtual, I had never really had to manage work-life balance from my home before. Uh, Even when I was a student, I was reflecting on this. As a student, like when I was sitting for board exams or midterms or finals, I always, I always went to libraries in college and in graduate school. I've always gone to quiet coffee shops. Like I, I, I need that separation of space. And COVID was really the first time that I, I didn't have that. And it was very challenging for me, especially as someone who does like to give. I found that I was writing treatment plans for hours. I was like going, I, I had no, no boundaries of what was going to be work time and what was downtime. Um, and it was really not, it was not helpful for me. So I, I can empathize. Like I was so happy to get back into clinic.
I don't have kids, but I, all my friends who have kids, I, I'm like, you know, you guys are heroes. I don't even know how you're managing it all. And I know that like, when I talk to not going to be the, the best transition point, but for her, it's a mental transition between work and getting mm -hmm. back to life. Stuff. So this is why I say like, oh, spend some time when you're not stressed, creating that list of healthier options so that your first thing isn't going to that glass of wine. Instead, it's like, like, I love go taking the dog for a walk. Yeah. And that is a very good way to be like, oh, I'm transitioning environment. I'm taking some fresh breaths. I'm moving my body. And for me, that's so important. So like just part of this whole thing is so much about it's an opportunity to really spend time like becoming more self-aware so like Kelsey you know what kind of worker you are and how you like to work and even then it was challenging with all these boundaries right yeah. so we can only imagine with like people who haven't spent all that time figuring out you know what their tendencies are because we're always helping people figure that out right mm -hmm. um anyway yeah I'd love to hear questions too I don't know where are we at with um any questions yeah. coming in some questions um, that were submitted beforehand, but also for anyone joining in, if there are other things that you want to touch on, definitely feel free to raise your hand, speak up, or pop it in the chat and I can read it out loud for you. Um, but one of the questions that we received was um, wondering what your advice would be for when you are working from home and you have a stressful day at work that happened actually just right in your living room, what would be the best advice for transitioning away from that stressful environment um, and kind of clearing that energy. I guess reclaiming your space. <laughs> yeah, I like that word of reclaiming your space. And you know, I, I'm, I'm currently living with someone who is working from home and he actually started a new job on a Tuesday and would work from home on Thursday for COVID. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of transitions and it was a new position. So um, I am living with a very stressed out husband. Um, and, you know, things that, ha that I've been kind of encouraging him to do and um, that I found when I was working from home that was really important to me was cleaning up the office space at the end of the day, I think can be really that idea of, you know, reclaiming it. Like don't let your computer and all your books and all your notes and your coffee mugs build up um, so that it still feels like it's like this messy office and you're just always looking at it. Really trying to find a way to put your your work, your the physical space of that office you've created, finding ways to um, put that away for the night. Um, I think that can be really helpful. And I do think it is really important to do your best to try to get out of the house even if it is a five minute walk of like around the block, um, it's really important just to have that change of scenery. And it's kind of like, you know, you're leaving the office for the day and when you return, then it's your home and then it's dinner time. Um, and we, you know, as New Yorkers, we used to walk so much, you know, we would walk, you know, eight minutes to our subway, walk down the subway, walk to get coffee for lunch. You know, we were getting our 10,000 steps in just because we live in a major city. And we've really dropped off on that. So um, using that as an opportunity to kind of, you know, put away the office, leave the apartment, come back and let it be your home. I love that, Kelsey, because I definitely am not doing that. And I will start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember like when during, I think it was like April and May were very rainy months. And it was really when we were in lockdown and I would have like three days go by and realize that I hadn't left the house. And that's just, it's so unhealthy for our psyche. You start to really feel like the, the house is really oppressive. Um, so really it's simple as it sounds. We really need to get ourselves outside, walk in, move in our chi, activating our meridians um, and just changing our physical space. Yeah, so in, in line with what you're saying, like, in any situation, it's like our state of mind can determine our experience. So, you know, if you can obviously do the real thing and go outside and, and be physical and walk around. But um, even if you just take a few moments to like close the eyes and just do a little deep breathing, anything that really helps you to get back in your body and being mindful because, um, when we're just on autopilot, we tend towards, um, just like water, it flows to the easiest way that it can flow. So mm -hmm. those are all habits. And so when we slowly start transitioning and thinking about like, what kind of healthy habits do we want instead of these 
you know, old things that were now are being highlighted for deletion, essentially. And um, I love that you have this ritual of cleaning off your surface, literally, and then like going for fresh air. Um, even in, in normal days as New Yorkers, we don't get enough vitamin D and enough sunshine. So it's so critical. Um, morning sun is, is really good to kind of get your circadian rhythms in order and back to under, you know, like knowing when the sun's coming up. Um, yeah, and we're heading into winter, it's going to be even harder. So there, there are definitely things, anything that makes you feel good. Like I was, I saw a friend on Zoom the other day and ever since I showed him Palo Santo, it's like every time I see him, he's like, because <laughs> I don't like the smell of, of sage for some I don't reason. either. <laughs> like, I wish, I like Palo Santo. I love the most insects. Yeah. Sage does not do it for me. Yeah, I think that it's kind of like cilantro. Some people it's like so amazing and other people it's a little cloying or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so my, my thing that I like to burn is also Palo Santo, but then with the rainforest and all this, you don't need to go and get more Palo Santo, but if you have it, or light a candle, create whatever ritual you want that, that in, that's on your like healthy want to have these habits list, and then whatever, you know, the other stuff, just acknowledging that they're there. So even if you do have that glass of wine, it's not the first thing you go to. Someone who did, um, who used to work for us is Christopher Peacock, was, mm. our, was our clinic director at Brooklyn Heights for, he started the Brooklyn Heights Clinic over a year ago and just recently moved on to his own private practice. But he took the time during COVID to really add in, um, he's someone who said he's very habit driven. So he started to make little changes and really committed to being in his park every morning at 6 a.m. Mm. And he would walk for one hour. And regardless of weather, you know, regardless of anything, he made sure that he did that as a way to start his day. And I mean, aside from just his overall mental health, physically, he was able to lose, I think it was like 30 pounds. It was something very, wow. very, very significant because just the idea of, you know, changing like those little choices we make every single day. Um, there's this man, Darren Hardy. I've read some of his books as well, again, in that self-help genre. But, um, you know, the, those little choices we make every day, they compound upon themselves and they do become our habits. And when we choose to do that hour walk in the park, <laughs> over maybe that glass of wine, which no judgment on your friend for her <laughs> glass of wine, you know, let her have her glass of red wine. There's worse things one could do. But um, what is the difference of choosing that hour walk versus a glass of wine or, you know, mindless television? Yeah. When it doesn't, in one day it seems like nothing, but when it compounds upon itself, it actually, it can be a really life altering um, habit that you're adding in. Yeah. I think this, this time where we've, kind of been pulled into extremes like where our whole social calendar has been diminished to like you know nothing <laughs> or yeah and and you know it's all just work and and yeah. you know your your basic needs um it's really had a toll on everybody and I think that like just yeah finding healthier habits because I I've also been in that boat where it's like wow like I see how not paying attention and taking these moments to really just think about, you know, how I'd like life to be mm -hmm. just because it's like, you want to think like, Oh, five, 10 years from now, or even a year from now, when we look back, like, are we enjoying ourselves? Do we still have that joy that you love to talk about? Right. I think that, like, was, that was something we said we talk about. And I say, I ask my patients this pretty regularly um, is I, I ask them like, do you have joy in your life? And some people are you know, very quick to answer yes. And some people are almost startled by how hard it is for them to come up with things in their life that bring them joy. And oftentimes someone can find it. Um, but we, we should have a connection to joy in our everyday life. And that should be a non-negotiable. Yeah, I agree. Not too much. Yeah. And I think that really it's about knowing how to access it. And part of that is knowing that it's not something outside of yourself. It's mm -hmm. something that you cultivate from within and, you know, the ways that can help you do that are just like Christopher being in nature for him and, and moving the body or whatever it is that like sparks that, that joy within. Right. I like to do something you said when we were talking earlier, kind of like, you know, we do need to try to find that silver lining or like, sometimes we can get almost, you said too connected to our suffering. 
Mm. And, and that, that is a really dangerous, that's a really dangerous mindset. There was an article that came out in the New York Times a few years ago called The Busy Trap mm. and how busyness can sometimes almost have this like badge of honor. Like, oh, how have you, how have you been, Sue? I've been busy. Like, like, <laughs> like how, how incredible of you. You have so many things to do. But really kind of what does that mean? What does being busy mean? Is busy a choice? Is that, is that, or is that just us reacting to things? Are we really taking ownership of our life when we just fall into this busy trap? Um, yeah. I, I would rather have a friend say, I've been, you know, I've been really happy. I've been feeling really fulfilled. I've been, <laughs> I've been developing new hobbies. Work has been really, really inspiring me. But that's, that's typically not how people answer. Um, so I, I think we need to be careful to not, not, not let busy be this badge of honor, but really kind of you know, own our choices in our everyday. Yeah, I think this is so critical. I talk a lot about this when I teach meditation, but um, part of it is that when we don't have um, an outlet for our stress and our, you know, any adaptation energy left in us, we're just repeating the same cycle over and over. That includes the same thoughts you had yesterday and the day before, the same patterns, the same thing. And that's where people get kind of like feel hopeless or, you know, or, or a little down in the dumps. And really it's, it, it is a shift of mindset and understanding that um, this joy isn't something that you get by having a beautiful partner and a house and all the exterior things that you love. It's something that you have to learn to cultivate internally which is why i love meditation but other people can just go for a walk in the woods and appreciate the beautiful sparkling leaves and the wind you know anything is great it's just kind of getting in touch with something that feels connected to something bigger mm -hmm. so whether it's religion spirituality nature whatever it is that 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 kind of lights you up and gets that sparkle going and obviously now there are some people that are finding it really hard to even have that bandwidth, but we're all here to help you with that. And acupuncture actually is great because it's physical first, but it's an energetic medicine. And so sometimes we feel sad and hopeless because the chi isn't moving. It's something that we are really good at moving, right? So um, yeah, the life work balance thing, like it can be as simple as like the thing, the tools that we're talking about but, um, you know, because it's different for everyone, one, you have to have the self-awareness of what it is that will help you feel fulfilled and, you know, joyful as you're doing your work. Because you don't want, you know, years to slip by and you're like, what was I doing? Just working so hard for what, you know? So. I think in going to that idea too, and also recognizing, you know, it is going to be different for everyone. And I, I know I was kind of saying to you before, it's like something that I've, I've realized is actually like during the weekdays, I actually need very little social interaction. I like to see my husband, but other than that, I actually find any social obligation, whether it be friends with dinner or dinner with friends to be more of a burden than it is enriching. Um, I really do like Monday through Thursday to, or Sunday, if I'm honest, Sunday through Thursday, <laughs> to, to really just be about work and my, like, my health, making sure that I'm eating and I'm sleeping and my home is pulled together. And that, to me, feels like balance. When I, when I start to have obligations on my calendar, that can throw me mm. just as out of balance as if I picked up a double shift. Um, yeah. realizing what does that look like for me? Some people really do need to see people every single night. That is just, uh, the, the, the older I'm getting and the more I'm getting to know myself, I'm realizing that that to me is, is not fun. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people feel that, that way, you know, and it's, there's nothing wrong with it for some people. Yeah. You just have to know what energizes you and what depletes you. And those are just preferences. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with being more social or less social. It's just right, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to work more. If, if, if for you, like working and building your company is something that really does fulfill you and you feel like the time that you put in building this and working in your career brings you joy, that's great. You know, let it, like a work-life balance is never going to be 50-50 and it doesn't, it doesn't need to be 50-50 for, for everyone, for most people, it doesn't need to be that. Um, but just finding, you know, what is, what is it that feels right to you, that makes you have joy in your life, that you feel like your non-negotiables are being taken care of, 
Um, and that every day you can kind of check in with yourself and you know, do a little self-assessment and be like, am I happy? Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, I think just remembering that it is our personal responsibility to like find that joy from within and create the life that we want to be living. Um, and it doesn't have to look a certain way or be anything in particular. It could be just, you know, something that you love doing every day, whether it's just like going to like check out what the ducks are doing if you happen to have water and <laughs> ducks. I don't, but that's my imagination going. But you know, like you have to have fun and um, that's critical to, to make life sustainable and, um, yeah, I mean, I think that we we definitely thought about trying to give you guys some takeaways, you know, um, some practical tools to take into your week. And um, yeah, I guess so if I were to summarize mine, I would say take the Sunday or your whatever your Sunday is, right, your down day, and um, just take a few minutes to really like take time to write in, you know, how do how do you want to envision your life? What, what, what are your dream things? And then what are the non-negotiables for practicality? And then look at your week and make sure that you've actually like put those in your calendar. You're flexible, of course, you know, but you know, some people have like three meetings in the same time and you have to make that decision ahead of time rather than just going and then being like, Oh my God, what do I do? And, and making, you know, falling into making decisions in a panic like just have a, just take that time on the front end. And then the other thing I like to do just cause even though I, I'm not like a big proponent of achievement based societies, I do feel good when I get to check something off. So in my day, if there's something I have to do and it could just be the one thing that I need to get done that day, I just, you know, it's nice to kind of, to take care of it early on. And yeah, I don't know. I think those are my, my takeaways to give you guys. What about you, Kelsey? Um, I, I think I, I really like, I like your takeaways and I feel like mine are, are again, pretty similar. Um, really, really owning your non-negotiables. And I think we all know that the, you know, think about times in your life when you have felt like you were a little out of control or things were, um, out of balance and kind of realize what was it that you're really missing or lacking, or if you're currently in that place right now, what are you lacking in your life? Um, where do you feel like you have nothing else to give and kind of decide for yourself your non-negotiables. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm the list driven person. So having, having those lists that, you know, you need to do. Um, and because those, you, we can't let those linger because that's just going to lead to, um, festering anxiety. That's just going to continue to pool over into your life. So having that list and let it be a combination of things I need to get done for work and things I need to get done for life and things I need to get done because they're fun, you know? You know, put, put that, um, schedule that yoga class and put it into your calendar, you know, let yourself do that. Um, and, you know, so figuring out what you want there. And then I think also just, you know, allowing yourself to adjust, make adjustments, make, you know, constantly just kind of come back to yourself and just asking yourself, um, are you happy? Is there joy in your life? And if not, um, giving yourself the freedom to find that joy. And um, also giving yourself the freedom to say, you know, I'm a little out of balance right now and um, asking for help if you need it. Um, and then also not being afraid to let some things go. Um, okay. Kind of looking at your calendar and realizing um, are some of the things that are on there, is it things that you actually want to do? Like maybe I used to keep that dinner with friends on a Wednesday night because I felt like I should do that. Um, but I've, as, I've, as I've realized now, that's not actually bringing me joy. So allowing yourself to let go of some things. Yeah, I love that. That's such a, that's like a lesson that a lot of us don't learn until we get in our mid thirties or something. Well, I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I, that energy, that, that unbounded wellspring of, of energy is not always there. <laughs> like it no, is in your it's not. So it's good. It's nature's way of teaching us that, you know, we have to be more selective about, you know, we create quality time for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I love all that. And then when you're looking at the places where you, you might want to do better, right. Um, I thought, Oh gosh, well, I know because of the eating thing, I, I made lunch non-negotiable. So it's in my calendar. I know I've done that. 
but I want to like make it a quality thing. So mm -hmm. I've decided for the next month, I'm just going to have gentle attention to like, wow, I'm going to like really try to, to think about nice lunches I would like to have. And we have, we have the time. It's, yeah. it's just a little bit of extra attention on the front end. And then you can create a month of like delicious meals that you'll be like, yes, I'm definitely taking that 30 minutes or an hour to step away and um, yeah. eat without that anxious stomach. Because we know that it's not just about what you put into your body. It's the mindset you have while you're eating in terms of whether you're able to actually digest it and extract the nourishment from it. So yeah, you can just eating at the computer like you used to do at the office. We all, we knew that was bad then. Mm -hmm. So why are we doing it at home? So yeah, yeah I think exactly. critical that, that yeah. no eating at the, <laughs> at the desk for lunch. Yeah. It's been so helpful. I feel like there's been some really great takeaways and I love the idea of prioritizing even just little treats just to like give yourself that. I think that's something that I personally hadn't thought about before. So thank you both so much for all of this guidance. Um, if there were any other questions, we can squeeze them in. Otherwise, um, we might start to wrap up. Um, we'll send an email out in the next day or so with a little recap of everything we touched on as well as the recording of this. So you can come back to it and share it with anyone who you think might also need some advice on balancing work and life. Well, thanks for chatting with me, Sue. Yeah, thanks, Kelsey. And thanks, Emma, for uh, giving us structure and creating the space for us. Um, and everyone who joined, we're so happy you're here. And um, please reach out if you have any questions that are you know, more personal or whatever, but it's all, it's, it's all a work in progress for everyone. So, you know, we're just trying to help people figure it out based on their own tendencies and their own, you know, things that bring them joy and happiness, all those things that are the essence of, of life, right? So we can't forget that that's why we do what we do. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was a nice note to end on. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great rest of your Thanks, Monday. Guys. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>